This is the 10th year of the annual letter, and you actually started working with Bill on it, co-authoring it about five years ago. Take us back to that moment when you decided to become his partner with this. Well, I was already working. I've been working at the foundation for years, but I was working more behind the scenes, and par- and that was very purposeful because I want I value my privacy. I valued my kids' privacy, and they were young, and I wanted to protect them so they could be in their schools and their communities known as who they were. But over time, the more work I did for the foundation, I just realized there were issues I cared so deeply about that I wanted to have my voice behind, and particularly, I felt like on a lot of these women's issues that I could speak to them in a way that would be heard differently than Bill. And I have three children, two girls and a boy, and I was teaching them to use their voice in the world, but I had to say to myself, am I role modeling to my daughters using my voice in the world? And the the answer was no. And so I thought, you know, I gotta speak out and use my voice more, and that is what I've been doing the last five years. You write in the letter this year that countless times you've been asked by press, what happens when Bill and you disagree about the letter? And you also say that this is a question that Bill hardly ever gets. How do we get to a point in society in which journalists like myself don't make assumptions based on someone's gender? We bring them up just like this and we say, interesting, why is nobody asking Bill that question? Like we bring it out. So it's actually transparent. So people go, oh, right, maybe I should ask him. Like, why don't journalists ask men about work-life balance or taking care of their kids? It's like we had society where all men could do was talk about work when they worked. And for a long time, women, you know, women at the top didn't feel like they could talk about having families. Well, guess what? We're making it okay for men and women to talk about work-life balance because many men and women are balancing work-life issues, as they should be, right? Life isn't just about working and it's not just about having a family. So we have to make it transparent and we have to be willing to speak what the truth is and to be vulnerable and say, hey, this isn't really okay that journalists aren't asking my husband this, right? Absolutely. Sheryl Sandberg has famously said that one of the most important decisions a woman can make, a working woman in particular, is who she chooses to marry. What's your advice for young women who are trying to choose their partner right now in life? I would say, and this is what I tell my kids, that decision is the most important decision a man or a woman will make, is who they choose to marry in life. Because if they choose well, that person will support them in the good times and in the bad times and will support them in their career and support them with their values and what you want to do with kids. So it's interesting, Warren Buffett said to Bill one time on stage, Bill got asked what was the most important decision he ever made. And he said to marry Melinda. And it took me a while. And and, and Warren said to him, that is the most important decision you ever <laughs> made. But I would say to any woman, you know, pick somebody that has your values Pick somebody that you think has the same goals in mind for life and somebody you respect and they respect you and obviously who you love and who you can have great communication with because ultimately at the end of the day, it comes back to listening and communicating and respecting each other all the time. And that's not always easy, particularly when you go through tough times with either kids or work. And you speak openly in the letter about the time when you were done raising your family and you came back to the foundation. You said you were a little reticent in certain meetings and you found yourself not being able to speak your voice. Why is it important to you to share those stories in the place like the annual letter? Because I think so many women face those issues in the workforce, either because of what society has told them for many, many years, or I'm running into more and more women who take a family leave and then they come back and we know women's confidence is back a little bit and you need to help them. But I think a lot of women face imposter syndrome. And so I don't want to be put on a pedestal like, oh, Melinda's just got it all figured out. She never had to deal with it. Of course I had to deal with it. And If we're honest with one another as women, we can help each other overcome those things and we can be vulnerable enough to say, all of us face it. So what do you do when you face that situation and how did I get through it? And by talking about it and and reminding people how you get through it, they go, oh yeah, I can remember that in the moment, right? So I wanted to be more vulnerable in this letter and talk about what I have really faced as a woman leader in hopes that maybe I can role model some of that for other women.